Christ, Evan F. Moore, one of the uh, Gold Defenders, episode five. In this episode, we're going to be talking about doxing and also um, <clears throat> also social media influencing mm -hmm. and how that kind of puts people in a weird space and falling down rabbit holes and such. But first off, we're going to talk about doxing and how it how that affects folks. And uh, what is doxing? Yeah, what is it? Like, can we get a Wikipedia yes, or something like a? The, <laughs> I, got, I, I got you. Definition. I got you. I do. I got. I got. I got a Webster's uh, definition of, of doxing. Webster's right okay. Cool. Okay, I, Web, I trust. Okay. I We're I trust official Web. here, Webster's. Yeah, I'll read it to y'all right now. To publicly identify or publish private information about someone, especially as a form of punishment or revenge. Mm. Has that happened to you before? Have you been doxed? Yes, sir, I have. Wow. And it was, I mean, I was probably on to say, like, um, y'all familiar with uh, Tariq Nasid, right? Like, yeah. the super mm -hmm. duper yeah. hotel up assy dude. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. He was a pimp at one point, wasn't he? He wrote that book oh, on, yeah, like, how to Mac it. Yeah. And, yes. <laughs> And you, you, you all are familiar with... You're probably going to get on us for this. Yeah, I'm about to say we... <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> so you're familiar with what a hope that is. There's someone who on the surface appears to be pro-black, but mm -hmm. you peel those layers. There's, there's homophobia, there's misogyny, and some other stuff that's mm -hmm. kind of weird. So basically, I remember what happened with, with me and this guy was he said something about Chicago. Uh -huh. And we you know when somebody ain't from here, yeah. you know, we got our... Our beast, and, but some, if somebody come at us, we all gonna jump on on them. So he said something about the violence, and he put out some article basically saying like the gangs was really, well, the, not the gangs, but, like the cops was really behind the shooting. Mm -hmm. I wasn't disputing that. I was just like, this could be formatted better. I'm looking at it from my journalist cap, like trying yeah. to talk mm -hmm. to him, like, yo, this is not how you go about it. It's how like you do this and do that. And we went back and forth a little bit. A couple of days later. A cousin DMs me like, yo, some dude on some podcast is talking all this shit about you. Oh, I'm snap. like, what? <laughs> so I look at the pod, I look at it, kind of similar to a podcast that we have right here. And, yeah. and it dude went on about me for like 10 minutes, oh, like wow. telling people to look me up, showing like pictures and everything else. I'm just like, what? Like, well, I'm like, what's this? What's, what's all this? Because I've heard the stories. A lot of people in my field, wow. it happens to us a lot in wow. journalists. Like we say something somebody don't like and mm -hmm. somebody... Well, let's look at information on us. This guy's telling people where to find me and all this other stuff. Wow. And I was just like sitting there like I wanted to respond. But everybody around me was like, yo, this people were like who had similar in uh, sorry, similar experience with this guy was like, hey, just, just leave him alone. Don't even go there. Cause you see me, yeah, cause you see me online. Like I had no problem going after somebody I feel like is right. And yeah. all of a sudden you just seeing all these people like it went on for like a while. Like people DMing me like somehow they want to kick my ass and all the other stuff. And I was wow. like, shit, pull up, you know? And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the thing is, people understand, like, some people, we like to, sometimes we catch information in different areas. Like, I was still hearing for, from people about a year after, like, yo, did you see this? Like, yeah, I saw it. Like, yeah, <laughs> the motherfucking, wow. you got pictures on me and then you yeah. talking shit about me. Yeah, I saw it. Like, <laughs> yeah, so it gets really crazy. And I've seen where people have to leave social media over that. Like, people don't realize this stuff is more widespread than, than we like to imagine. I've seen it happen to many social media influencers and this guy's influence all you have to do is it's like this thing where you just like throw it out there and just watch your minions and who are followers whomever like jump on you it gets pretty crazy yeah i think that's the point like you know it's it's not him it's the doors that he opened by doing that to mm. someone that have y'all met before had you ever met him in person i never even heard him before like, this happened so you you know it's it's that thing and i think that in today's society and in media we've gotten so quick to jump down folks throat um, and do something that could be very dangerous to you, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, whether he meant it or not, it's just using it for comment, whatever content, whatever, fine, cool, whatever. The effect of it is it puts you in danger. You're a father. Like, you know, you have family. And I think people forget that, like, what we're putting in this sphere behind these phones and computer screens are real. There's a person attached to it. I'm very cognizant of that. Like, I don't publish stuff about folk or people first that aren't true. And I'm never, I'm actually really adamant because I'm not a journalist. I'm, mm. I, I'm you know, I, I'm in a different sphere. And I'm like, I'm not going to say anything negative about people that A, that I haven't verified or this is not true. And generally, I try not to do that anyway, but just because of that, like the dangers that it opens up. Plus, I know I got a lot of followers. I know people follow me mm. and they look at my influence of what I'm able to say. And I don't want folk joke, jumping down the throat of someone because I may feel some kind of way. It's dangerous. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get somebody hurt that way. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's in our field, I remember, like, uh, it's a story that we all kind of looked at where it was a beat writer for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He said something about Kevin Durant. It mm -hmm. wasn't 
salacious. It wasn't like out there. Mm-hmm. And Thunder fans like jumped at his his uh, Instagram page, talked wow. shit about him, his family, and he had to shut it down. And that was kind of like a, a precautionary tale for us because everything I have is on, on Instagram and Facebook is private. It's like I don't know you. Like even in, like when I um have pictures of my kid, I don't put it. On, I don't put that on Twitter. I just have it on Facebook or, or Instagram so people you know that know me. Even still, like it's just a thing where you just like you just. Never know, like, what somebody's mad at you about. We do have to take those steps in, in our field, especially other, other folks. And, like, you just, it's one thing to kind of throw that out. For me, if I was, like, if I come at somebody, I'm not going to be, like, hey, all my followers, like, jump on this cat, too. Like, it's, I mean, I can handle myself. But it's crazy. I got a question now. Like, with because we, you got, you, people know you, right? Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of folk know you. Um, a and lot you, more in the past than now, but, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> And I know, like, social media was just kind of getting rolling uh, mm-hmm. when you were still, like, making a lot of music and, and heavy in the industry. But did you experience anything like that? Did you have, like, folks like, do, doxing or social media issues that you had to encounter? Like, Well, you know, there was, like, a site that um, I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. It was, like, one of these sites. This is, this is pre-social media. I mean, maybe MySpace stuff and, mm-hmm. like, a little bit of Twitter stuff. But there was a site that women had put up for, like, I don't remember what the name of it was. It was something like I messed with a baller.com or something oh, yeah. like that. They had a few. It was like, oh, don't, don't date them, what it was. Don't, don't date them, girl. girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. so, yeah. So I was on all of them joints. So, like, it was, like, maybe two or three different situations where people had posted things about me. Mm. Um, some things false. Some things had semblances of truth. In all of those situations, that information lives on the internet, you know, in certain ways. Um, even when we uh, we were on tour in Arizona, we got arrested, and there was, like, a situation with a club bouncer or some other stuff. I don't really remember the exacts of it, but, like, we pretty much got put out the club. Double O, the partner in my group, he got his eye socket pretty much dislocated by this wow. bouncer and it's caught on tape oh. it was on world star caught like millions of views on world star oh. and um people tried to flip it like we started a riot in the club and wow. all this other stuff so you know there's stuff like that that goes on where um things can take a life of its own um i remember we we made an actual statement at this point there's a difference in the way things happen i think now you would just get on instagram and say what the hell just happened get on live and right. be like this yeah, is what right. really happened here's how it went down um but we had a situation where we had a publicist who made us make a statement about what really happened the stuff on that don't date them girl site that was pretty pretty interesting because i started going on that site and seeing who else people oh, talked about amazing. and how that went down and it's like yo if you have a situation and somebody, you know, I had to think about my interactions with people and like, yo, am I just like, because it literally could be somebody who just wanted to talk to you and you kind of blew them off. That's right. <laughs> and they give you these, he's a complete total asshole. And you're like, yo, that's not even me. I don't know what happened. I don't even know who this person is who posted this thing, blah, blah, blah. And so stories can take a life of their own. I think convergence has made it to where these smartphones allow that information to travel a lot faster than mm-hmm. it used to. But yeah, I mean, you look at what happened like Myron Roll with with, oh, man. Yeah. with um, Amanda Seals and, and, and you know, that I don't know who, I, I don't know. The interesting thing is I actually know Amanda. I, I don't know Myron. <laughs> uh, he's frat, so I follow him. So right. I, I kind of, he's somebody that people look to and be like, oh, like, dude is doing his thing. He's just, He's, a, he's trying to be a neurosurgeon, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. He's a, had his residency at Harvard, blah, blah, blah. Rhodes Scholar, NFL, ex-NFL player. He seems to be an example of achievement, which is, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. what our, our fraternity stands for. But it's what black folks should stand for generally. And so his mm-hmm. his posts are generally just very neutral about what he's achieving and what he's doing. Right. Whereas Amanda... She's a personality, so she's out <laughs> here. Like her point is to, to keep it real, keep views. And um, I agree with a lot of what she says. Some of the stuff she says, I shake my head and I, I'll DM her. I'll be like, "Why you say that?" She's like, "You know me. This is what it is." <laughs> <laughs> and she's a master real following doing that. But I think in this instance, what she did on the Breakfast Club was a little bit much because she 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 tried to act like it was she was anonymizing him, but she wasn't at all. And I think that that it took a life of its own. So I saw mm-hmm. people on his page that are just attacking him, not knowing even what the real story is. And that's where, going back to, like, the dangerous component of it, yeah, this man has to sit for medical boards, right? And one of the things they look at now is character. Mm. 
So <laughs> you're not just jeopardizing someone's like personality or whatever that is, you know, the personal side, but it's also jeopardizing his career, yeah. which he's worked extremely hard yeah. for, right? Like to, to get to that level. Yeah. And I mean, I see, we've seen it happen here. We've seen it happen both politically. We've seen it happen mm -hmm. um, in social media, like, you know, words to your point about convergence and because of our phones, Words travel, but mm -hmm. words matter, and they really have a lot of power. Yeah. If anybody's shown us words have a ton of power, it's our current, you know, resident in chief. That's what I call him because he's just a, <laughs> like a resident of the White House right now. Um, but but the the power behind words, Agent making, Orange, <laughs> he can go on Twitter right now and completely skew, skew the stock market overnight. Yeah. Like not just our market, global markets by saying something on Twitter. And so I think it's really critically important to think through that as, you know, we think about how we put content out, what we say, what we don't. Um, I, you know, I was mm -hmm. thinking about our first shows, the groupings that we've had. It's been a lot of thank y'all for the positive feedback out there. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Um, I and I know we have all talked about how we want to represent black men of course. as a brand. And so even um, in how we approach our show, it's important. And so, yeah, that Amanda Seals thing, that was that was that was wild. I... <laughs> and you know what's interesting? I want to say this. Um, you know, I work in um, the marketing field um, in my in my firm. And so, you know, we we talk about this all the time. You can spend, you know, 36 years building a brand, yes. building a reputation, Man. but you can ruin it in two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to spend a lifetime rebuilding that. That's right. And so you have to keep that in mind with every aspect of your life, whether it's, you know, your personal life, your business life. You really are your own personal brand. Yeah. And, you know, all you have is your name and your word. And for so better or for worse. Exactly. So. You have to make sure it's always protected and mm -hmm. polished. Yeah, right. I have seen it. I mean, I got a decent following, and it's crazy. You could be out somewhere and it's chilling, and somebody will go to you like, "Hey, you ever that more?" I'm like, "Yeah, what's up?" And they'll like, "I'll follow you on Twitter. I'm a big fan." Woo -woo. Man, this happened to me like at the grocery store. Yeah, on a date. <laughs> Man, like, uh, well, else? Uh, mm -hmm. that's be out chilling somewhere. You think that you just doing your thing and you're trying to cut up a little bit and you realize you can't cut up. Like, when that happened, when that first happens to you, when somebody recognizes you, you used to be like, this it's that moment, we're like, yo, this is this what I asked for? Like, it's this a lot different. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think from a journalistic standpoint, you probably are like, this is just my opinion or this mm -hmm. is the way I cover things or this is the way I see things. And you kind of leave it there. Maybe you don't realize who was reaching, but your stories reach a lot of people. Yes, they do. And I think, you know, with your brand of journalism in particular, like you can string together that this person has a particular kind of mindset. Like you don't have a vanilla story set. If I, you know, if I may say so myself, like I think there's definitely a, a, a trend in the way that you write that's poignant to me, but it could at the same time like have people moved to either want to love you or hate you there's right. no in the middle right so i think music is the same way because i used to i used to make the mistake of like name searching myself all the time like just seeing what people are saying for every 10 people that are like yeah i love i love this song and now I'm playing i'm playing mm -hmm. it it'd be like yo this new knowledge is annoying <laughs> like i don't <laughs> fuck with this dude you know what i'm saying and like at first i would get upset at that because i'd be like well i would try to address it directly because yeah. i got access to it so i'd be like on the tour bus like yo so what you mean i'm not as dope as so-and-so or what you mean this song is whack like why why do you think it's whack give me an explanation then you realize they don't really have an explanation they just they they got what they wanted just having the interaction with you i learned that a long time ago like, <laughs> man I, I learned that a long time ago where he's i remember i was going going back and forth with somebody on Twitter about something, I, I an article I wrote, and he was like, I got all day, pal. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> so, you know, and you're just like, well, yeah, because if you let these folks, trolls and different people get at you, like, they'll take up your whole day. Like, right. you think this is like a quick treat, and like an hour later, you still got him going back and forth with this person. So you got to, like, just check yourself and realize you can't answer to everybody because some people feel like, oh, if they come at you online and you don't answer back, they mm -hmm. feel like they got you or they dragged you. And sometimes you're just sitting there like, I'm not answering this shit, or you just go <laughs> off and, and do something else. So I think, yeah. honestly, like, the biggest clapback is to, like, not answer because that person spent their part of their day worrying about what you're doing, and mm -hmm. you don't want to give them that same energy. Yeah, I had that happen recently. Like, a, a homegirl of mine, I did a panel. Um, it was a Black History Month panel in technology. Like the panel had four black men mm. and all talking about black in tech. Mm -hmm. And a homegirl of mine, I posted a photo, and a homegirl of mine who's a good friend, she's dope, she was like, 
Jeff, what's up with this? I don't see any women on the panel. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Like, and I said, well, the panel was designed to talk about um, increasing black in tech, but it was a partnership with the 100 black men in Chicago, yeah. right? And she was like, well, we just got to call the feet to the fire to make sure that women are included. And I said, completely agree. But I deleted the comment because she put at the company, right? Oh, yeah, and she yeah, doesn't yeah. know. I'm doing business with this company. I'm trying yeah. to grow a relationship with this company. And then she hit me on the side and the DM was like, well, you deleted my comment. And I said, yeah, because you commented without full context. <laughs> like you went in, you were about to go in on this company who had nothing to do with planning this panel. The panel was planned by their employee resource group yeah. who partnered with the 100 black men in Chicago. Yeah. I didn't have time <laughs> to tell you that at 7.30 on the mor in the morning headed to work on a yeah, Thursday. Yeah, so, right. like, we we have to be more mm -hmm. patient sometimes mm -hmm. in our reply. And I think it, you hit an interesting point, too, talking about, like, the, how you would reply to folk. And someone told me, uh, who's relatively famous, that the higher you go and with people thinking that they have access to oh, you, yeah. the more you're going to get that. Oh, and yeah. you really have to learn... Um, to ignore it because at some point, at some point, you're gonna do something that may not make you famous, but make you infamous. Okay. Oh, and yeah. and his thing was in today's society, honestly, infamy is just as great and can be used just as well as being famous. Look at Soldier yeah. Boy right now. Right. right, he's out here trolling Drake, right. <laughs> you know. or even Kim Kardashian. Yeah, I mean, it's easy once you have, you know, what does Seth Golden call it, the the purple elephant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You can get people to look, but will they stay there? So in order to, mm. to have people stay there, you got to keep creating purple elephants if you don't have any real talent. So, I mean, it's <laughs> not sustainable without, like, kind of going crazier. And, I mean, I, I saw that in, in the Hollywood scene mm -hmm. where people live for that fame. And I think now with the ability of, like, you could just be a cute girl on Instagram and get 100,000 followers. Right. Like, a really cute girl, right? So... I think about, like, my era in L.A. and what that must be like now. It's, like, completely different because, you know, that girl 10 years ago was just a struggling actress who's a bartender. But now she's going home. She's in the mirror taking photos. Right. And she's like, yo, I'm about to get this up so I can start doing these tummy tea ads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's and get, the, yeah. get this bread. <laughs> get I'm, that blue check I'm going to pretend that I use waist shapers, you know, all of that. And I'm going to get this ad money. And, like and really it's... shapers gave you that figure. <laughs> and, and, and her whole following is just pervs that are looking at her 24-7. Uh, but right. that's a different wave. And, and it's a... You know, being far removed from that to a certain extent, because now entering in academia, it's a, it's a more pristine thing. But like, I'm like borderline still edgy. So it's like entering in those rooms. I have to be way more cognizant of what I do, say how it's presented. Um, but I think now we can control our narratives. Yeah. Um, but the way that people bully online. You know, for these younger, you know, I deal with the youth often, you know, um, particularly in in low income communities and, you know, having had like history working with nonprofits like that's where I see like where it trickles down, where yeah. those patterns kind of seep yeah. now into our communities differently. And it's like, whoa. Like, if, if this little girl is looking up to Jordan Woods and Kim Kardashian, yeah, and she in the bathroom on break in seventh grade taking pictures, of, you know, of herself, and wow, it's not really the wave. But then, like, there's, like, some dude, there's a Tariq Nasheed of seventh grade who's right going to, like, troll the heck out of her, had a whole school, and maybe the three schools in the surrounding areas believing this girl is this yep. or that. And so, you know, that's what scares me. When I explain people to what, you know, fake news is or alternative news, I always, I'm a big Wire fan, and I always mm -hmm. tell them, like, the thing about that season where uh, where Marlo, like, put it out there about Randy being a snitch. Like, Marlo mm -hmm. had all the capital, anything he said went. We all knew Randy wasn't really a snitch, but Marlo said he was. And remember That's when Mike, you remember, you watched the show, you remember That's when Mike, needed to well, be said. yeah, right, when Mike <laughs> broke it down to him, like, yo, like, it don't matter if it's true. Like, he got people to believe it. Mm -hmm. And you saw how that trickle-down effect where he, people would bully him in school. He, his house got firebombed. They ended up in that halfway house. You saw the, the season after that, how he was, like, how he was wilding out because of that. One of the rumors putting out the there, too. like, <laughs> said his whole life, like, it, 
Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, there's a there's a, a quote that I heard recently at a conference, and it said, when there is no story, people will create one. Mm. We're seeing that in the world now. And, and you said it earlier, and I was like, you can literally create a story mm-hmm. over a, a three-minute segment on your phone mm-hmm. and give something mm-hmm. a completely different narrative. So I tell a lot the young people I work with, brands I work with, companies, own your narrative, own your story. Yeah. Because someone else will if you don't. Yep. That's true. Uh, you just get one person to believe. It's a wrap. <laughs> I mean, you know, the marketplace for attention has is, is never been any less crowded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Crazy. <laughs> Shout out Jesse Smollett. No, I'm... <laughs> uh, too much too soon i ain't you know too soon. you know I, I watched empire last week and i, I was too. highly disappointed <laughs> but uh you know that shows on it's just a wrap yeah for that. but yeah i mean i think i think just to just to bring it to a close i think as much as the internet is a great tool and a great medium to have a we can't throw the baby out with the bath water right yeah Mm-hmm. Um, the medium is not always the message, but then two, we, we need to kind of treat the digital world the same way we treat the physical world and that we're, we're very aware of who's watching and, um, what we're saying while they're watching and how that may affect them. Cause you know, I think the scarier part with the internet is that that, that anvil can come down much differently mm-hmm. with the internet and with, with doxing. So reputations can be won and lost within seconds. And I, I think we need to be more cognizant of that and, and let the, let the jury of public opinion kind of not be where we let everything lie until we know all the facts. But I think that's our time. So we're going to have to wrap this up. But if you have something to say about this, definitely follow us, respond, reply, DM, tweet, whatever it is you feel like you need to do to hit us up and ask us about these topics. We're more than willing to reply. And we are the Go Defenders. That's our time. Peace. Peace.